Welcome to Good Libations, our show about bartending, mixology, the making of fine drinks, unique drinks with our own flourishes and embellishments on the cocktail. And one thing I want to mention, I've made mention of this in previous shows too, is the term mixologist has almost become an elitist moniker. And I kind of rebel against it in a way. And I almost feel like using the term, I'm a bartender again. Because anything that smacks of elitism to me is like covering up lack of genuine ability with a title that confers, you might say, status and snob appeal, which I don't like at all. But whatever you want to call me, a bartender or a mixologist, that's what I am. And we're making a journey. We started out once again in South America, in Brazil the only Portuguese-speaking country, and we made drinks with cachaça. Then we went farther north to Mexico and made a tequila drink that had become a stereotype into something unique and different, not complicated either, but just unique and different. And then we made a mid-Atlantic drink using ingredients that are indigenous to Georgia, North and South Carolina, and Virginia. And in that part of the country, too, people take their alcohol seriously. They want good drinks, they want strong drinks, and they don't want stereotypical drinks. They want drinks that are comfortable and cozy, but not drinks that are tired. It's kind of like a, a chair that is old but comfortable is good, but a chair that is worn out. You're sick of it. And we don't want those type of cocktails either that are stereotypical and worn out. And the drink that we're going to make this time involves bourbon, which is very popular in America. And this particular drink is a drink that involves the use of a cocktail glass that we use for martinis, margaritas, whatever, Manhattans. Some people use it for sidecars and for old fashions as well, although many people will use them. Um, an old-fashioned glass for that, but whatever whatever the case is, that's what I like to use for this particular cocktail. And this cocktail is called the Langstaff, and purportedly it was named after a bartender at a really nice watering hole in either Kentucky or Tennessee. And of course it's a bourbon-based drink, naturally, and it's a little bit different from most bourbon-based drinks too because it incorporates the use of um, an alcohol base that has anisette in it. And I like to use an alcohol that has anisette plus other herbaceous ingredients to really add a different dimension to this drink. So first of all, I'm gonna go ahead and add ice to the shaker, and we're gonna proceed on making the Langstaff. And funny enough, I actually knew some people with that surname when I was growing up in Whittier, but I don't think they're related to this particular individual, whomever he was. But this is a nice drink. Um, and one thing I want to bring out too, any alcohol that involves anisette, like Pernod, Ouzo, you know, regular old anisette liqueur, if you mix water with them, they will develop a cloudy consistency. Even absinthe, which, of which the main ingredient is um, anisette, that will develop a cloudy look if you add water to it. And of course, absinthe was banned in this country for many, many decades because it is derived in part from wormwood, which is a bona fide poison. So it was severely restricted, and now they've reintroduced it and allowed establishments and even individuals to be able to purchase absinthe. But what I'm using is not absinthe, but it is a very common, in fact, anisette overtone liquor, but it has a lot of other herbs in it, much like absinthe does. But you definitely get a top note of anisette or licorice off of it. Anyway, what we're going to do first is we're going to pour in the bourbon. And again, this is a very modest bourbon. We don't have to have fancy stuff to make cocktails. But I do want to say that if you're going to drink it neat, you're going to want to buy a top-level bourbon 
from a really, really nice distillery. But anyway, I'm going to add this to the cocktail shaker. And bourbon is the prime ingredient in this drink. And we are going to add a bit of sugar to this drink. You could also use homemade simple syrup. And I always mention homemade simple syrup because commercial ones often utilize high fructose corn syrup. And that is just an invitation to destroy your liver and cause you health issues. So I'm just going to use regular sugar here. And then in addition to that, we're going to add lemon to this drink. Squeeze that lemon in. And this is an ugly looking lemon, but it has a lot of juice in it. And that's what we want. Plenty of juice. And then we're going to add a little bit of orange because orange always goes well with bourbon. And anyone who's watched episodes of my program knows that when I make whiskey sours, I always utilize orange in them also, the so-called um, Eastern sour. So we've added the orange and we've added the peel. And I'm going to add a bit of the lemon peel in here too. Now, here's the ingredient that has the anisette overtone. And it's something that many people know well, especially college students, it's Jagermeister. But it has a good overtone of anisette, which is what we want, plus other herbs. So in some ways, it's totally different, but yet like absinthe. So we're going to add it. It has that kind of medicinal overtone and taste that absinthe has. And you might be thinking to yourself, why in the world would you combine absinthe or any other alcohol that has um, anisette with bourbon? That's what I originally thought too, but it makes a wonderful cocktail. They actually blend very well together. They meld and marry very, very well. And like I said, I was surprised because at first I thought, that sounds dreadful. But preconceived notions can be totally off. So, like I said, I really liked it. And we'll see how this turns out. Many times I've used them straight anisette with bourbon, but because of the other herbs and botanicals that are used in uh, Jagermeister, this is a good cocktail. And Jagermeister, sad to say, because it's kind of a drink of college students and young adults, people might kind of cringe and go, you must be kidding. But again, don't judge it, try it. It's like, I don't particularly like using absinthe, but it's a unique alcohol in of itself. It's kind of like Benedictine. It has herbs and botanicals in it also. But this makes a really, really nice cocktail. And the marrying of the bourbon it's the old opposites attract in the, uh, you might say, anisette-based flavor is absolutely perfect. And again, for eye appeal, as always, I'm going to add a bit of a garnish, a little bit of orange. Sometimes a maraschino cherry works in this to any bourbon drink. Maraschino cherry is good, including the whisk whiskey sour. And I'm going to add a little bit of the lemon peel as well just to add some more essence and to make it look nice so here we have a, a drink that seems to have very incongruous ingredients but the result is very very nice and of course i have to sample it to make sure this is quality control that this is as it should be that is so good and there's just enough Jagermeister in it that you get the licorice anisette taste, but it doesn't overwhelm or obliterate the bourbon. And the bourbon plays off of it. What a perfect combination. Very good. Central Europe meets some, um, the mid-America, mid you might say. What a lovely cocktail, the Langstaff. So we're concluding another episode of Good Libations with this lovely bourbon and Jagermeister based cocktail. And you might want to give it a try. I think you would enjoy it. 
and thank you for tuning in once again. I'm Ethel Andrews. Goodbye.